Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I'm going to show you how to crochet this really, really cute hat. And I'm making this to go along with a Ferris wheel scarf. And I have a tutorial for that. I'll put a link for that below. And so I thought it would be fun to have a cute little hat to go along with it. And I think it's so sweet. And of course you could put a pom-pom on if you like. And the way this pattern is designed, you could actually make this uh, as long as you like. You could make it like into a slouchy hat. And so it's a super easy pattern. So let's get started. All right. So here are all the yarns that I'm going to use for this tutorial. And of course, they're all the yarns I used for the Ferris wheel scarf. So I'm not going to go through all these yarns again. All that information is in this tutorial for the scarf or for the um, Ferris wheel granny square. So I'll put a link for that below, of course. But basically these are all a number four medium weight yarn. And then I'm using a four millimeter or I6 crochet hook. And in this pattern, the color that I put around the border, it's a denim blue. And I ended up using a number three lightweight yarn for the border. Be, and for the scarf that was fine and it was really important that I had the denim color so I settled for a finer weight yarn but for the hat you want to have a sturdier brim so I'm going to be doing the brim in this color and what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the strands up and I'm going to use two strands to crochet the brim if you have a color that's in this number four weight and that's no problem. So let's get started on the brim. Now I've started crocheting the brim with my double strands of the denim and it's a little bit hard to see in the camera. So I'm actually going to use a different color yarn and just the number four medium weight and just to show you how to do the brim. So you'll start with a slip knot and if you're new to crochet i do have a beginner crochet series and you learn all of this in the beginner crochet series so you put that on your hook and you'll start with a chain eight two three four five six seven eight and then you'll skip that last chain there and you're going to work a single crochet into the next chain working just into the top post and going into that back post with a single crochet and then you'll work a single crochet into the back post of the next stitch and you're going to work that all the way back to the other end of the row so you'll have seven single crochets all together And this here counts as row one and you'll be counting your rows because you want the rows to be divisible by three and then making sure to catch that last stitch with a single crochet and then chain one and turn your work. Now you have this row of V stitches that are really quite obvious there across the top and you you'll be working into the back post of each stitch. So you skip your chain one and you go into the back post with, with a single crochet. And then another single crochet. And you're going to do six single crochets. And the last one you're going to do a little bit different. So just working into the back post only for six single crochets and straightening, straightening this out a little bit. And so that's number six. And then for the very last stitch of each row, you're going to go under both posts at the end of each row, just like that. So picking up both posts. In this first row, that might be a little bit hard to see. Uh, and then you do a single, do that single crochet and the chain one. 
and I'll just do one more row. So skipping the chain one, going into that back post of the first stitch with a single crochet all the way along for six single crochets. That's number six. And it helps to count because the last one can be a little bit tricky to see. And always for the last stitch, pick up both posts of that last stitch. And the reason for doing this is um, I'll just do the chain one. And the reason for doing this is it creates a little bit more sturdiness uh, on the end of the, the brim. So you're just going to repeat that back and forth, back and forth until you get the brim the length that fits comfortably around your head. And you want to have the rows divisible by three. So that's one, two, and three. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. So here I am at the end of my brim and I ended up making 69 rows, which was 18 and a half inches long. And so that's a good fit for, for my head. So just finish off with a chain one and turn your work. And now you're going to bring the beginning side of your brim around to the back and put your short edges together and bring your work facing you. And we're going to slip stitch these ends together. And you're going to be working into the beginning row. You have these posts that are right at the top. We're going to work into those and then slip stitch into this top row here. We're not going to go through both posts because that actually makes quite of a bulky join. So you have your chain one. So start in the first stitch after your chain one, picking up the one post. And I guess you'd call this maybe the inside post and just join those with a slip stitch, just like that. And then pick up the next post on this side and go over and pick up the post on the other side and join that with a slip stitch. And then again, we're just gonna slip stitch these together all the way along, your beginning row is going to be a little bit tighter than your finishing row, but that's just the nature of how it starts. So I'll just speed this up here a little bit and just work your way all the way along. And then once you get to the end, you want to make sure to catch this very top piece here. And it may not look like there's a stitch there, but you want to make sure to pick up this top stitch here. There you go. And finish with your last slip stitch. And there you go. And that makes a really nice, neat join. And it actually looks like a row. And then you can darn your tail end in if you like or save it for later. And then this is the inside of the hat. And this is the outside. And that's how your join looks. And you won't even see it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work a row of single crochet around the top of the hat. So that'll be nice and easy to crochet into. Now this will be a little bit tricky, but we're just gonna single crochet all the way around into the end of each row. So you'll see here that your first row is kind of low and the other one is higher and the, and it sort of goes up and down, up and down. And there's not an actual stitch to work into. You just need to sort of find a couple of stitches in the end of each row. So start with a chain one. This is sort of a loose chain and this counts as um, your first single crochet. And then you're going to go in this first row and it's sort of a lower row and pick up a couple of posts and do a single crochet. And then in the next row, this is one sort of sticks up a bit and I'm gonna try to find a couple of stitches here that I can work into. And again, this, is, this will be a bit tricky, just be patient with yourself and you will get into a bit of a rhythm too. And there we go. 
You pull that through and, and it, the stitches will be a bit tight and do a single crochet. The lower stitches are easier to pick up. The upper ones are a little bit harder to find. So you're going to work your way all the way around and you should have the same number of single crochets as you do for number rows. So for me, I'll have 69, including my first um, chain one stitch. So we'll see you on the other side. All right, so here I am and I've come around the band and I use some stitch markers to keep track. So this is stitch 60 and that's eight. So I'll do one more to have my 69. And just going into that last stitch with a single crochet and then join with a slip stitch into your beginning chain one. And so that's part of the end of the row and there's the chain one right there and just do a slip stitch. And then you can do a chain one to fasten off. And just snip your yarn, pull that through and snug that up. And that's your band all done and ready to go. And you can darn those in if you like. I'm not going to do it quite yet. All right. So now what you want to do is turn the band right side out. So we'll be crocheting on the right side, the front side. And I have all the yarns here that I used in the Ferris wheel granny square and granny square scarf. And if you saw that tutorial, I was talking about how to use these colors where there's sort of three lighter colors and three darker colors. And so I'm going to alternate them. So I wouldn't use these two side by side or these two side by side. I'm going to alternate. So I'll start with a lavender and then red and then gold and then green and then pink and then teal, something like that. So I'm just going to zoom back in here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start with the lavender and you're going to join on with a slip knot and just put that onto your hook. And you're going to start not in the stitch where you fastened off, but in the first stitch. Oh dear, I'm a little off camera here. I'm sorry for that, but there we go. Go under both posts of the first stitch and you join on with a slip stitch and just like that. And then you're going to chain three and and then you're going to do two double crochets back into that same stitch. And that chain three counts as your uh, first double crochet. And just like that. And we're not going to do any chain ones in between these three double crochet clusters. And then you're going to skip two stitches and you're going to do a double crochet into the third stitch going under both posts and then you're going to do another double crochet and one more so you're working your sets of three double crochet clusters into one stitch and then skip two stitches and do another set of three double crochets into that third stitch so you're going to do that all the way around and it should work out that once you get to the other end you should just have two stitches left there you go. So go ahead and work your way around and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, here I am at the end of the row and I've got my two stitches remaining and you'll join this round by doing a slip stitch into the third chain of your beginning chain three and picking up two posts from that chain and just join with a slip stitch and you'll join every round in this same way and do a chain one to fasten off and cut cut your end and there you go now i'm going to join on another color so i'm using the red 
Then you start with a slip knot and put that onto your hook. And, and just join onto the back of your hat as you go along with each row. So go into any space in the back of your row and just put your hook through the space, bring your yarn in from behind, flip your tail over and do a slip stitch. And then chain three, and that counts as your first double crochet. And I'm going to do two more double crochets into that same space. And you'll begin every round just like this, uh, joining on a new color in this way all the way to row 10. Row 11 will be a little bit different. So then you go to the next space and do another set of three double crochets. I'm just partially crocheting my tails in here. I'll go part way crocheting them in and then what I do is I darn them in back in the other direction. And, and then you go over to the next space and do a set of three double crochets. And so you'll just do this all the way around. It's super, super simple. And, and of course, when you get to the other side, you're going to join on into that third chain of your beginning chain three, fasten off and start your next color in that same space. So continue to work around. So you're going to do that for 10 rows all together. And I'll come back and show you the colors that I used and what I did for row 11. Welcome back. So here I am. I've done 11 rows all together. I've changed the background too because that other color was making everything look really yellow like my fingertips. So I went back to a more neutral background. So you can see how I did the different colors in all the rows. And then for rows 10 and 11, I did the same color in the denim blue. And we're going to close the crown up here and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But if you were wanting to do rows where you want to keep the color the same, a continuous color, I'll just show you how I did row 11. Rather than fastening off, you just join with a slip stitch as you normally would. And then you would chain three and that would bring you up into your next row. And then you'd work two double crochets back into that space there. And just like this. And then you would carry on working your clusters of three double crochets all the way around. So that's how you would continue on with the same color. So I'll just pull this out here because we're going to be closing up the crown. And so what I have here is um, my final height of the hat is seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And of course you could carry on and make this as long as you like, make it more of a slouchy hat, whatever you like. But we're gonna close this crown up and I'll show you how to do that next. All right. So what you want to do is cut a length of yarn about 24 inches. It should be, you know, big enough to go all the way around the rim of your hat. I was taking photographs and I didn't cut it this long enough. I'll just ease it in. It'll be fine. But for ease, just cut yours about 22 or 24 inches altogether. And then you'll do a chain one to fasten off and bring that long tail through. And then you're going to take a darning needle and thread your yarn onto that darning needle. So what you want to do is you want to work in the direction that your knot goes in and you'll see that when you tie it off. So this knot's going in this direction. So I'm going to work in that direction. I'm just going to spin it around because I'm right handed. So what you'll do is you'll skip the first stitch and you'll go put the needle in under two posts of the second stitch and coming from the side closest to you. And darn that in, skip a stitch and go in from the same direction under two posts of the second stitch. 
And basically what you're doing is you're creating a, a basting stitch all, all the way around. So skip a stitch and go under the next. So go ahead and do that basting stitch all the way around into every second stitch and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so I've basted all the way around and I had to sort start gathering it already because the yarn wasn't long enough, but that's, that's okay. So once you get to the other side, then you have this lovely gathering stitch, this yarn that you can pull and gather the crown of the hat in. And it's a little bit bulky, so you just sort of have to work at it. And so just fuss away and pull it in as tight as you can. Be careful not to pull the yarn too tight. So that's about as tight as you're going to get it. You'll have a hole about the size of a penny. And then you can just stitch this hole closed as best as you can. So just start on the one side and bring the yarn through the top and just pull that closed and again just from one side to the other and just stitch it closed and it, it comes together really quite easily just like that and see you can't even see and then you can bring your yarn down into the inside of the hat and pull that through and here i'll just flip it out inside out. See all my tail ends? <laughs> and then just tie a knot and then you can darn in maybe a two inch piece and then go and darn in all your tail ends. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. It's I got all the ends all darned in and it actually looks as nice from the inside as from the outside. And so you can always tell what the back is because that's where your seam for the brim is. So that's the back, but you really can't even tell. So you could wear this any way around. And so while you could put a pom-pom on there, I'm not going to. I like the way it sort of finishes off and looks like a star at the top, but you can do whatever you like. And of course, you can see how nice this goes with the Ferris wheel scarf. I think this is such a cute set and it's a fun and easy project. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. Thank you for joining me.